So you guys were one. I'm hearing all you guys. You guys want the theme song short, so here we go. This girl reviews movies, games, and books. Sometimes she plays them. So does that. And when she does it with the cat, does that make her crazy? Does that make her crazy? Probably. <laughs> so, it's shorter. There you go. <laughs> Crazy Cat Lady or Martha Butler does not own the, any trailers or pictures. I use them under fair use. Katie Snow for edge and entertainment purpose. Blade, it's like it's all they did. Well, those years ago. See? No, I don't want to do any more of it. Stop. Hi everyone, Martha here. So I finished reading, listening to Four on Fire, and I think it was good every time i um like last time the story is sad because um um sandy city and um and carter both have keep on losing people who are close to them or they have to keep on um ha having to add okay you have to save this person now onto their baggage and they're both so young they're both this teenagers and sadie this bradley comes a teenager and this book and sadly the girl doesn't really get to celebrate her 13th birthday and she only gets one so yeah and that uh, i to her since i relate to her more she's probably the one i'm uh, she's my favorite character probably in this carter's great but i think i think sadie just makes more sense for me to relate to her so and right now so um what happened i had to like Reference the other things that I knew about Egyptian um, culture before this. So now, Prince of Egypt's one of them, and so was um, the prequel to that one. Joseph, the the jo one about Joseph, and there's also uh, the Mummy movies, the one with Brenda Fraser in it, and. Uh, and Yu-Gi-Oh! And so, but those mostly don't talk, like only one of them really talks about the gods. And that one is um, Prince of Egypt, and they barely mention them because that one's supposed to be about, more about Jesus and, um, and God. Well, more about God, because Jesus is not born yet, but more about God and Moses, and who's not really um, descended from those guys. So, me listening to um, this book, helps me understand um more about this culture and also some stuff about like um i did watch a couple things on the history channel like how um mummies work and like how much they worship their cats and stuff like that that's what mostly i know about it and um history like cleopatra but they don't even mention um cleopatra in here they mention king tut who I do remember, because King Tut is about, is, um, since, um, Walt is his, um, descendant. And what I never at King Tut is that he died when he's, like, 18 years old. And people blame it on, um, not just the curse, they also blame it on the fact that there's a bunch of, um, incest in their, fa in their family. And, and mostly people believe, blame, how he died because of how much incest he's had in him and that killed him so that's what i kind of believe i don't to me i don't believe any curses and stuff like that i do believe in theories but i like to have proof of this kind of stuff not just them say oh it's a curse because um people now when they go inside these old um tombs and um those ones make more sense because how old those um tombs are and them being touched by and, and um the, all those uh, scientists and um explorers and um archaeologists go inside there and the reporters and them touching stuff and them them eating the foods and then putting them touching their mouths and, their, and everything like that that makes more sense for them to die from going inside a place that's been there for thousands of years instead of um the, them just saying oh it's curse no what this made more it makes more there's this much more sense about that than the saying it's cursed so yeah um so the character the new character probably like about this is 
past and then what happens to him in this book is sad because I didn't know there was even dwarves in um Greek mythol and um Egyptian mythology. There's even griffins there. Like they have like things that are part of different mythologies that I did not know that were a part of this mythology. I do like when um at the very beginning of this book, um Carter mentions that he saw Pegasus because um since this is supposed to be a spin-off of um Percy Jackson and when they have like mentioned um little tidbits from the uh, from Percy Jackson books I like um them when they mention that so let's get on talking about what's going on in this book so they have to fight the god of chaos in this one of of um just mythology and um a guy who is Russian who like the Britain has taken um so Britain, Roman, and Russia has taken objects from Egyptian and and claim it as their own, and then started making things that and taking things from them to make part of their world, and put them in museums and stuff like that, and say it's theirs. Now it's good to keep that stuff reserved and in good condition, but that stuff was reserved. so they have. So the first fight we go through is with Walt and Jazz, who are new, or two new characters that have come to um, New York to learn more about the magic and stuff like that. Um, Walt, because he's related to King Tut and has the curse, and he's going to die soon. It more often, he uses his magic. Because apparently, his father died when he was a teenager, so that means that technically Walt was born to a father who was a still a kid. So yeah. And but he gets around not, not using this match, he uses amulets, so um it goes it, it, it that way it's not used directly. And he gives an amulet to um Sadie and she uses it after when um Carter gets bit by a snake. And in this book there's a lot of um snakes in here and that makes sense this is egyptian culture and um there's snakes everywhere in it and there's snakes there so yeah it makes sense that there will be snakes in this story but it kind of reminds me of um indiana jones and i and since i'm not a big fan of snakes i feel like him and says when he says i hate snakes why is there a snake in this airplane <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's why I feel like, why is there so many snakes in this book? Oh yeah, I read an Egyptian book. <laughs> so yeah, um, we have like during like the first half of this book, um, after they face the the, the Griffin, because basically what Carter does, he like tames the Griffin to be like, a good Griffin after attacks them. And, um, Sadie's busy getting her hand burned. So, yeah. She can't really help, so it's up to Carter and, um, Jazz to do it. And Walt, so. Because she's holding it. Because Sadie's holding the burnt uh, is holding, um, up, up some hands burnt. And Jazz and, um, Walt are still getting used to their, um, their new, um, role in this. And poor Jazz gets put in a coma for most of this book, so we don't really don't get to know her that well. She only has a few scenes. And, um, Walt represents, uh, what Sadie should be dating, because really she should not date, um, Anubis, because how old Anubis is. Even though he is attractive and makes himself look attractive for her, he's still way too old for her. So Walt's more something that's more around her age and makes more of her sense for her to date. It's basically Anubis represents like all those times where girls or and boys were attracted to like actors who are like way older than them, and they probably would never meet. That's what I see um, Anubis as. And and also, he stays that way. <laughs> it's like she's, if he's really taunting her. So, yeah. And the fact that he kisses her in this... In here. But he's not really able to help. Because he has to stay... He can only help when it has to do with um, somebody dying. Since he's the god... This is um, the king... Since he's the god of the dead... 
So yeah, to this to them. And so the next one they fight. Um, Sadie's birthday is coming up, so she wants to go spend time with her friends and her grandma. So she go when um their uncle Amos comes back from going to him with therapy from being having the bad guy from the last um book inside of him on her book and now he's recovered he offers to let Sadie go by herself to um England but she's not allowed to take any magic with her so when she arrives there and um two of the guard gods the god of um who has vulture body and I know well I won't be able to say all of these characters because remember this is Technically, my first time learning about these characters, so sorry if I just tell you what animal they are. If I don't remember their name. So, yeah. Um, we have the one that looks like a vulture that takes over um, their grandma. And we have Billy, who is spelled, uh, that one's spelled with B A B I. And that one takes over the grandma and takes over the grandpa. And, um, poor Sadie has to battle this by herself, and she has to make sure that her, her two friends don't get hurt. And she does end up defeating them by herself eventually. And by having, um, Bess show up, who is the dwarf god. And, um, he, he is supposed to, like, be an escort and, like, ride them around and stuff like that. Um, that's what he's supposed to do, and that's what ba um, Baz, the god of the cats, um, sent to help him to protect them. And those we have like a little bit of love triangle going on here. We have um, these two, and the god of the, um, the hippo goddess who shows up in um, in Moon Knight, and. Um, there's, they're like, one of, she, the hippo goddess ends up saving, um, Bass from the Russians and makes him feel sorry for it, but since, um, the, the cat goddess is way more attractive than a hippo, um, Bass goes after her and goes and helps her, and, um, what happens during this with he they end up fighting like kinda like a board game with the god of the, the moon and um he ends up giving his life to protect both of these kids and um the hippo goddess blames um the cat goddess on this and um she doesn't even want to go and see Bassett at the end of this book and see because um they had the hippo goddess basically be like um a nurse at a nursing home where old gods go when they die and when they go and get um, raw because that's who they're going to go and get in this book um they have to go and get him and he acts like he's a freaking senile god a senile man who has either alzheimer's or dementia there's one entire time and every time he t talks about one of the characters in here he ta um gives them like a uh animal names. Like, Walt, he gives them Weasel, um, 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 what's her name? The one that Carter looked. Zia, um, Zebra. So, yeah. And, that's, the Zia, we find Zia and Leah on this book. The real Zia, not the one we have Clay that she, that she sent that, um, the leader of the light sent to go and protect her while she had um, one of the gods inside of her. And they have to go, to, and um, Carter and Bass has to go to um, her home and save her while um, Walt and um, Sadie go and get the ne next scrolls. And she ends up fighting. Um, Finding a uh, set, and he, she had last book. They had to learn um, his real, 
is some real name. So she has to do this for Carter, and when she like releases him of his real name, he like makes a deal with her where she's not allowed to hurt them and so like that. But he ends up he ends up like making telling her where uh, Zoe or uh, not Zoe um Zia's home, villages. So they end up getting separated, and so that way they're eat, that's why both of them are vulnerable. After definitely Carter, since he just recently got almost died, and Sadie had to save him, and then Sadie has to learn about that she's not able to help Walt, and she might end up losing the the f technically the first got kid that she has a crush on that's actually around her age and not some god that she really should not be with. And have it, like we seen in the last series, where all basically every single one of the actual people are all related to, to um, all the gods. All these two are just related to pharaohs who are pretty much considered gods, and when they're when they were alive, but at least they were actually real people, unlike um, those gods and um, Percy ja and um, the Percy Jackson series, and so. Uh, I do like, and the last bit of this book is when, um, they're, like, fighting the Roman guy, the, the Russian guy, who, who drains, um, the, the life force out of, um, the leader of the House of Light last time, and later on in the book, he helps them beat this, the Russian guy, and I do like when they go to Russia in this book, and they only like have to go to where, um, basically where, Anastasia grew up, and it says it takes like 11 days to go through that part, and there, and that's, I want to know if that's true or not, does it really take 11 days to go through the whole, this one part, of that one castle, <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to read the last bit of the story to you guys, now, I mentioned everything in here that I mostly liked, I did not mention everything, so if you want to go read it or listen to it like I do, you can that you will have not everything spoiled for you and that's what but that's what I decided not to do everything and everything so I'm gonna read the last page to you guys and really the reason why because Sadie has a sad music that she listens to so this is um Sadie's chapter that's I'm reading right now because like in the last book, um, they had chapters that were Carter's and chapters that were Sadie's. So yeah, and I do like it when um, they have two different voice actors playing here because that makes more sense. I wish they would do that for Percy Jackson, but that makes that's harder to do because there's way more um, actors, and that's only really one um, part of the mix. Um, and Apollo and um, Percy, there's only one person talking. But in um, the series in between that, um, the Lip and Heroes, there's all these different um, characters who are boy both boys and girls. And it would only list the ones that I listen to have both a boy and a girl talking, since they don't have don't sound the same. So here we go. Um, we don't have all the answers yet. We don't know when or where um, a pompous will strike, which is that's the god of the chaos. So, so pompous, pompous, or pompous. Okay. We don't know how Teal Ra or Bess or even Walt. We don't know what role Z or Zaz will play, or if the gods will can be trusted to help us. More important, I am correctly torn between two amazing guys who are dying one way or another, and who is the god of death. What sort of choice is that I asked you? Right, sorry, I'm getting off track again. The point is, whatever you... Wherever you are, whatever type of 
magic you practice. We need your help. Unless you learn, unless we learn the parts of the gods quickly, we can't, we don't stand a chance. I hope that Walt is right, and I find, and you find it hard to ignore, because the clock is ticking, and we will keep a room ready for you at the Brooklyn house. So there you guys go, and also when they, this is also their place in New York, it kind of reminds me of um, Doctor Strange, in a way. So yeah, and they're both they're both magicians and magic. So I'll see you guys later. Like, hit and subscribe. And the next book I'm probably gonna read is um, the fourth book for um, Paulo's trial, which is let me look. Can we get my um, Amazon account up? Tyrant's Tomb. So. Yeah, so I'll see you guys later. Like, favorite, and subscribe. And I will eventually, and probably, um, what movie I'm probably gonna watch. Or sh show. Or I'm watching it when cool related. Since, um, the polar, um, version of Tigger came out. So I'm gonna watch that. I have two ideas to watch. So, I'll see you guys. Later. Bye-bye.